right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think we've already had opportunity to hear from such stellar speakers. I think the motivation is obviously there. And, and I see a lot of energy in the room. That's what we are going to need to get uh, where we are talking about. It was good to have both perspectives. Really, thank you for the last speaker and Professor Junjunwala painting the vision for us. You know, as I see it, right, I mean, uh, I think we need to have our eyes on the targets, the targets which have been announced by the Honorable Prime Minister. So we are talking of uh, going to 500 gigawatt of non-fossil fuel energy by 2030. We are talking of doing 50% of our energy mix by 2030 being fully renewable energy. And we are also talking about, you know, how do we reduce uh, the carbon emissions by 1 million tons, right? So as we get to a net zero target of 2070, I think our tasks is really cut out. You know, we need to think of a two-pronged approach. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think we need to think of how are we going to green our assets that exist right now? How are we going to, you know, make them more uh, efficient? How are we going to reduce the carbon footprint that those installations have while simultaneously thinking about how we are going to improve and increase on the capacity for the renewable energy capacity that we are trying to add. So I think this two-pronged approach is central. So how do we get there? I mean, we need to have a lot of scientific rigor and a lot of technological investment to do this. It's, it's very clear. Otherwise, the time scale and the ambitious targets are going to dwarf us and you know, the efforts that we can put in. Uh, talking about uh, the things that are required for this, it's very clear that uh, we are at a place where all these are available. And, and thanks very much to Professor Junyunala for laying out you know, the different dimensions that are possible here. We really want to see how we can leverage the technical expertise that we have available over here. I'm talking of both the breadth and the depth. I'm talking of the research infrastructure that we have, as well as the innovation ecosystem, uh, which exists in terms of research park. And we are going to need all these dimensions to come together and work together because we are talking of being able to traverse uh, not just the research part of it, but as I think of it, the science, the technology, the innovation, and the policy realities. How do we straddle all these four is going to be equally important on how we do this. Uh, you know, we want our partners to consider IIT Madras as a, as a strategic partner of choice, because we want to be working with you on technologies which are in the discovery stages, which are in the feasibility stages, but as well as technologies which are you know, in the pilot stages, which are where use case validations are necessary. And that's another area where the infrastructure that we have here is going to be extremely helpful in addition to, of course, the intellectual hotspot that I'm talking about. Uh, there's a proverbial valley of death for technologies as they transition from the lab to industry scale. And I think that's something that we want to enable. We want to make sure that none of these technologies fall through the valley of death and we have the full potential here at IIT Madras to you know, ensure that we can handhold and help and work with the partners on this. Uh, talking about partners, you know, I mean, the critical thing to me is how are we going to do this? And, and, and there's, there's no simple way to say this. But I think two, two main ways that we have to think about this, how do we proactively engage with industry partners? You know, as we talk of enabling a transformation for low carbon future, I think we need to thinking to need to be thinking about how can we envision a future which is sustainable, equitable, yet having modern energy solutions, right? So we want to drive responsible energy choices uh, when we work with our partners. Uh, at the same time, we want to work with our government partners on two angles. One, we want to make sure that we are driving meaningful societal impact with the work that we are doing out of the consortium as well as we are helping with the policy dimension. I mean, particularly the technology to policy and the policy to technology aspects need a lot of uh, handholding, particularly some of the forward looking technologies that we envisage for, uh, for the new future. And that's again where I think we need to work with the government partners very closely. And again, I'm glad that you had such uh, uh, participation level and such excitement uh, you know, to work, work with us on this. Uh, thinking ahead, in, in, you know, in terms of think of it as a uh, mission mode, what will be the central outcomes that the consortium can drive? And I can think of top three over here is number one being, you know, we want to engage with different stakeholders. We really want to make this something where we are agnostic whether a stakeholder has a favorable or averse view to any one specific technology. We want to make sure that we uh, welcome diverse perspectives because they're going to be needed as we you know, advance some of the technology readiness levels. 
Second thing that we want to do is uh, work on methodologies. Yeah. As we talk about greenhouse gas emissions, as we talk about you know, trying to reach a net zero value, uh, the path to get there, the path to baseline where we are today, and, and the methodology that we need to develop as part of that is, is something that we want to drive as well as part of the consortium. And, and third and very simply, and this is something that all of you will acknowledge and you know, reverberate with me when I say that we want to be a place where we are preparing future leaders. When we think of few decades down the road, some of the students that are attending here today are going to be those who are leading companies, leading change, and really living in a world which is going to be more renewable than it is today. So we want to be you know, thinking of how do we uh, encourage diverse perspectives uh, and prepare future leaders. I mean, think of this as a cultural rewiring that's required for the future of uh, renewable energy, right? So that's something that we want to do. And again, I mean, this is something that we want to do on a more periodic, more rhythmic basis. So, I mean, we are all meeting here as part of the first summit that we have this year. We want to make this a recurring event, most definitely an annual event with a lot more things happening in between where we are able to gather together not only to calibrate on achievements, uh, but also brainstorm the challenges that we face along. Maybe think about what, are, what should be our evolving priority as we meet each other. Uh, we need to have a long-term plan. At the same time, we need to break it down and you know, make sure that we have those milestones which we are tracking and making sure that we are going and being able to you know, uh, go after them. Uh, talking about this, you know, I, I just wanted to take a moment to thanks this solid participation that we have over here. I mean, the faculty, staff, students that we have uh, present over here, the industry participants uh, that have joined us, as well as the government representatives, uh, both from the local as well as the global agencies. And I mean, those who are present physically as well as those who are joining us from a virtual platform, right? I mean, all of them are bringing some diverse set of ideas which we want to be hearing. I've been listening to different uh, thoughts from the morning. And I think there's, there's so much more we can do if we collaborate. There's, there's a lot of paths and we really need to join forces to get on, you know, moving on, uh, on these. From a consortium point of view, I want to acknowledge a lot of hard work put in most definitely. Uh, but starting with the visionary leadership that IIT Madras, the IIT Madras Research Park, the IIT Madras Foundation and the Alumni Association. I mean, all these folks coming together are really enabling us to do and think of something that was that was a dream few days back. And you know, I, I really want to call out some of those alumni who are the early adopters of this thought process and approach, and you know, who have really helped us get this off the ground. And we are really uh, uh, extremely thankful for the gracious support that they are providing to this energy consortium. Uh, ultimately, I think the time is right. The challenge is enormous, and what we need is all the scientific minds and all the technological brains working on this one big complex problem that we have, climate change. That's, that's the way I think we're going to get uh, around this. And then who else to lead this than India? And within India, IIT Madras, and of course with global engagement, right? So that's what we want to do together. I thank everyone for the participation. Welcome to the Energy Consortium at IIT Madras. Thank you very much.